Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Why, hello there. Welcome back. Okay, guys, this is kind of uh, an interesting side topic, and it kind of builds upon uh, the video we did the other day. And this is going to be talking about the red heifer and, you know, the start of maybe sacrifices at a third temple. You know, one thing I want, really wanted to show with the video we did the other day on evolutionary, uh, which there were so many comments that were like, wow, you know, this was the best you did in a while and really put things together and made me realize things that I never put together uh, before. That's exactly uh, what the whole world needs to do. And we need to share our information that we've picked up on how this system really works and you know cindy's been going through a little bit of a demonic attack and we've saged and cleared the air um and putting this together because you know this is exactly the type of stuff they don't want coming out there they don't want you understanding this no they don't and you know i can always tell with this dizziness feeling that i get there's there's uh, something is very, very angry, and, and that's what they do. But I've been getting stronger and stronger and stronger. So it really, I mean, I feel it, but it doesn't phase me like it used to. Um, but this is something that I think is helpful for people. With, with the eclipse coming up and all the energies tied to it, uh, I think it's very valid to talk about this because this is a form of history that not is not necessarily true but the problem is is that they make it come true because that they're the controllers these are entities like no other that we've ever seen in this lifetime so far absolutely so uh this is a youtube channel called sunday cool it's got over a million subscribers uh they did this video the red heifers being sacrificed in israel after two thousand years question mark um and 469,000 views six days ago. Uh, you know, this couldn't be the case if they were giving you information that the, the control system didn't want because the control system you know, is in control of uh, everything from, you know, YT, Google. Uh, they're in control of all the mainstream uh, media, obviously. They're in control of the mainstream religions. They, they literally create the mainstream religions. And this is, you know, something to get across. So I'm um, listening to these guys, and, you know, I've seen these guys before. Um, they're funny. They feel like nice guys. You know, it's an entertainment show is what it is. Um, not even remotely experts, obviously. They're, 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 they're not stating that they're experts on this topic. Just they are sharing what's out there and what's buzzing. And, and this is part of what's really buzzing out there is, is this thought that we are watching fulfillment of the Bible. So this means that the Bible has to be the word of god but as we showed uh that word is often misinterpreted misinterpreted and so you know is there really going to be a third temple is there really going to be the resumption of sacrifices one thing that's brought up and it wasn't just them we were listening to uh ken who is uh he has a channel called theoria apophysis and that's um you know, he's a, he's a smart guy. He's a nice guy. We like Ken. Uh, I'm going to bring it up for you guys. There he is. And, you know, again, when you just simply take what's being out there, this is it, the dark agenda and the eclipse. Now, Ken was military. Um, so at the same time, I always look at somebody that was military as you you never really leave the military in one way, shape, or form. Uh, he also speaks fluid Russian. So in this world, unfortunately, even when you like somebody, um, <laughs> you, you got to be cautious. You got to be cautious. And so he's talking about the dark agenda, and he brings up, you know, the two eclipses and these guys, these other guys were talking about the two eclipses and and the fact that, again, how things get misstated. They're bringing up how it's six years, 
six months, six weeks, and six days. Um, the reality is it, it's, it's six years, seven months, and 18 days. So automatically, you know, it's like, oh, okay. People are always, always trying to make things fit. They're always trying to make things fit in order to make their belief system justified and to give more justification to the belief system that they have. So they want to take something that's a little bit round and hammer it into that square you know, hole. So it's not six years, six months, and six days. No, it, it, it's not in effect. And it doesn't fit with the you know tribulation period exactly either. And that's, again, because... So much has been changed and distorted over time. We talked about, um, and and these are the type of things that I can't get enough um, information up there because I could talk about this for 10, 12 hours straight uh, as long as I had something to drink. <laughs> you know, there's that much uh, as far as tangents. Who are the Masoretes? They're, they're, they are a group of Jewish scribe scholars who worked from all from around the end of the 5th through the 10th century CE, based primarily in medieval uh, Israel and the cities of Tiberias and Jerusalem. Their job was to constantly edit and revise, edit and revise the Torah, the Torah. The Torah, the five books of Moses, and then we have the Talmud too, which we'll touch on. That, that's basically, the Talmud is how you are to interpret the Torah. And as we see, you'll have people that will say the Bible's perfect and there's no errors. Biblical scholars know there's errors. There's mistranslations all the time. There's revisions. In our oldest examples of biblical texts, you will find words crossed out and a new word written in its place. So, you know, again, yeah, were there errors? Of course there were, it's not perfect. And this is another one of those distortions. It's not, you know, six years, six months, and six days. The Bible's not perfect. In fact, you know, we could again uh, find tons of contradictions in it because there are tons of contradictions in it. But it's, again, that desire to prove somebody's belief system correct. And this is what they've done to the entire world. So when we look to the ancient Israelite temples timeline here, you see Moses receives. Now, these things are all approximates, and they can be completely off. <clears throat> and in fact, obviously, history <clears throat> can be completely manufactured in some places too. When you control, when you control the TV, when you control the newspapers, when you control the modern equivalents, every single thing in in the, um, you know, in the internet. The internet was a military uh, thing that was created in the first place. Most operating systems go through Gil Bates's. <laughs> His power, his structure. He uh, again, Gil Bates. Before you know, getting involved, you know, he was in Microsoft. You know, Microsoft Windows, exactly. Windows to spy on us all. Windows to give us a certain viewpoint to look at things through. I mean, this is all the same system. So they say, 1250 BC, Moses receives instructions for the building of the tabernacle. Uh, King David, you know, you can see these different timelines here, the Shechem Temple, Shiloh Temple, and and so on. And then King David, they say, were roughly right around 1000 B.C. And his son Solomon, Sol, Mun, Solomon, Sun, Moon, Sun, Moon, Yin, Yang, right? I mean, there's so much symbolism there. Um, and yes, uh, you know, there there is uh, a lot of deeper wisdom uh, to be gained from portions of the Bible, but I think uh, time is better spent studying um, some other texts, like maybe the Tao Te Ching, uh, the I Ching, maybe maybe looking into some of the uh, Yoga Sutras, which really are explorations of, of consciousness itself, instead of the control system and their plans for us. 
why not actually explore real spirituality? Oh, I know that's that's a harsh statement, isn't it? But it is the truth. And if you stick with this to the end, you'll understand where that statement's coming from. I do encourage you to stick with this to the end. So Solomon's temple was constructed, they say, 968 BC. And then we had the kingdom of Israel split into two you know, the northern and southern kingdoms. And this is the first temple period right here of Solomon's temple. And then we have uh, basically the conquering by Babylon and the Babylonian exile with the destruction of the temple. So you have a time period here where there was no temple and obviously no temple, no sacrifices. That's the part. Uh, part of the purpose to the temple is sacrifices to cover the sins of the people blood sacrifices, and then Zerubbabel's reconstruction of the temple completed in 515. That's the second temple, which was then destroyed by the Romans in 70 AD. And then there's another uh, diaspora there where uh, the Jews were dispersed all throughout the world. But, oh man, you know, it, they, they cover all their bases. They make it so that you have to be very careful about what you say about any particular person because it can be translated as being anti, you know, S-E-M. Uh, let's say Shem. Shem is, uh, means name in Hebrew. Shem, 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 name, name. Anti-Shem, metic, if you get what I mean. Uh, these people believe in blood, and I don't mean the Jews, I mean the, the controllers, the real control system does believe in blood sacrifice, absolutely. And, and they would do any sort of blood sacrifice as long as it moved their bigger purpose forward. So, you know, from 70 AD, no more temple, destroyed by the, the Romans. And then, of course, in 1948, uh, Israel is restored um, by an act of the UN, the United Nations, and preceding that um, by the Rothschild family, uh, again, that is part of the uh, you know control system that we know about because there's other parts of the control system that the masses don't know about in the Balfour Declaration. And, and what what occurred? Well, we had World War One, right? We had World War One happen, and we had World War Two happen. We have the Balfour Declaration after World War One, and then we have World War Two, and then we have the restoration of Israel because you know there was the persecution that made a lot of people feel like you know you have to protect us these people that were so persecuted by the Nazis. Why don't they have their own homeland restored? And they kicked out. Um, the people that were there uh, again and people poured back into what they took to be their their homeland that they thought was given to them by uh, again just that generic term God and we have what we uh, now have which has been nonstop wars and and World War three um, on our doorstep partially because of the conflict between uh, Israel and its neighbors which again, you could go all the way back and you you can go into the, the Bible where um, there's the blessing of laying your hands on, on a head and giving your heir. And we have uh, one of the biblical patriarchs there change his hands, switch them around and blesses uh, the forerunner of Israel. And instead of giving it to uh, the forerunner of the Islamic nations, or, you know, again, you, you can't make this stuff up. You really can't. And we were talking about Nineveh. And again, I'm glazing over some things because otherwise we're going to be in this for, for like four to six hours. But we have covered this before. There's a lot of other people that deep dive into this type of thing. Um, as far as from a more biblical perspective and a historical perspective without necessarily the control systems um, taking that as really the prime mover we were talking about how this eclipse um, you know happened to go over so many towns named Nineveh and then so many uh, named Salem the one previously 
and how it's it's all about taking peace away from uh, the U.S. and from the world. And in fact, I do think that's the bigger purpose. Remember, uh, we had 1871, which was such an interesting year because you have the declaration by a Confederate general who was also a 33rd degree Mason that they have three world wars planned. The control system has three world wars planned. And, you know, that the last one was going to be all about this and it was going to be centered about uh, Israel because, you know, they're going to have to restore uh, Israel. And they did. They did. Absolutely. And some will say, well, that's just God working through the control system. But then again, who is God? Well, if you're just looking to the King James Version, and the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord has commanded. Speak to the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came a yoke. So this, there are tons of red heifers out there, by the way. Um, the, the hard part is no spots, no blemish, have never been used for a- anything. Most cattle is marked immediately. You know, they, they get their uh, number. They're, they get their mark of the beast, uh, just like humanity is supposed to as well. And, you know, it goes on to talk about how, you know, the priest is going to go ahead and do this blood sacrifice. Now, that's the King James Version. When you, when you go to the names of God Bible actually using the Hebrew, it's Yahweh, specifically. It doesn't say the creator of this universe. No, it says Yahweh. Who is, again, who is Yahweh? Well, it, it's, it's written in Hebrew that Yahweh is your, uh, number one. It's your Elohim, your judge, your ultimate source of authority and power. And when it says your, it's only talking to the tribes of Israel. It's not talking to the rest of the world because there were other Elohim. These Israelites were were told, you will not worship or serve any other alien gods. That's literally how it translates. You will not serve any other of the alien gods. You're to serve just Yahweh. And you must hold Yahweh's teachings. And this, again, is, is part of that big reveal. So it talks about everything that's going to be burned, the entire cow, the skin, the meat, the blood, the excrements can be burned while the priest watches. It goes on to say exactly. And and Yahweh has his tent, by the way. Uh, and also Yahweh had his own sacred space that you were not allowed to go to. Uh, yeah, Yahweh was a very physical being. Yahweh was, was, was not, um, you know, the spirit per se. It wasn't certainly the Holy Spirit. When you look to the Talmud, and the Talmud, the Torah is is the five books of Moses, the first five books of the Bible. The Talmud is how you are to interpret that. And so this is a copy of of one that we have. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because you read from back to the front. Remember how we always say the control system's upside down and backwards? Well, this is upside down and backwards, literally. You know, I mean, I'm I'm looking at this, and I have looked at it for a very long time, and it's so easy for me to understand that these writings come from a control system that is beyond most people's ability to interpret um, because it's not, they're not from this planet. Um... I, I just I hope other people can start seeing it too because these beings are very good at manifesting. They know how to harness a belief system and get things under control the way they want them to go and that belief system is everything to them. They start children out so young in these belief systems and then there's reinforcements all throughout their lives, daily reinforcements to make sure that there's enough time, the human spends enough time reinforcing their belief system and they put in enough effort that they're not just going to walk away from it. it it's not, it's nothing, it's nothing to just uh, turn your back on because your whole life is vested in it. And they're, they're very good at understanding the belief system. Um, I, 
a lot of people are learning that we're in a position that we need to come together because we are a collective consciousness and we are here for a purpose to bring light and this this is not very popular what we do i mean we've noticed even over the past few days people coming into comments and they're being um very rude somewhat threatening and because i guess their belief system is is there's something wrong with it and i think subconsciously they can feel that but the instant uh reaction is is to just push back with all of your might and deny it deny it deny it and this is where people are pulled apart not brought together yeah absolutely you know then as soon as we really hit the uh, hot buttons here you have what we know are people that are con part of the control system uh reaching out to us this has happened before this is when you know we've 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 found uh Things that go bang in closets and doors opened in the middle of the night and et cetera, you know. So, you know, just they, they really don't like this being exposed because this really exposes everything. Uh, as you see this, Texas red heifers ar arrive in Israel. Could this be the end times? You know, as as we know, they were used for sacrifice, um, blood sacrifice to Yahweh. And, you know, this is something that many are just looking forward to happening again. And, of course, you have um, right there uh, on, on the what used to be the Temple Mount, or what is still the Temple Mount per se, one of the prime holy places with the mosque, uh, the Alaska Mosque, right there. And why in the world uh, would that be put there? Well... You know, again, it's part of the Abrahamic tradition as Islam does have its roots in the Abrahamic tradition and it views itself as the culmination of the belief system. Of course, now the Jewish people won't recognize that. There's different branches of Judaism as well as there's different branches of Christianity and there's different branches in, of Islam. It, it's all about creating tension. It's all about, um, it really is about blood sacrifice. And, and blood sacrifices do do happen in some cultures to this very day. You know, this is still something they do. This is for catching the blood. Um, you know, I, I always view it as barbaric personally. Uh, it, but war is a, is a blood sacrifice. They dress you up in an outfit. They prepare you and they send you off to die. Uh, and people think it's service to their country. No, the countries are arbitrary. Uh, the borders are really ir irrelevant besides in the scheme of the controllers. So, Red Heifer Sacrifice, you ready? April 2024 and September 2022, five seemingly unblemished Red Heifers were transported from Texas to Israel by Bonne Israel in conjunction with some quote unquote Protestants. So in March 2023, the Temple Institute declared one of the red heifers disqualified for sacrifice. What is it? And et cetera, et cetera. Um, and does, you know, Bible prophecy talk about future animal sacrifices? You know, w there is nothing more in the system than Bible prophecy. There is nothing more in the system. It's not anti-system. It's in the system. And the entire Abrahamic tradition, in our opinion, is the system. It really totally is the system. Um, it's it's basically uh, the control system has, has worked its way into all the major uh, religions and done its best at distorting uh, as much as it possibly can. You know, it's interesting. This is the year 5,784 in the Hebrew calendar. And Shabbat Parah for the Hebrew year begins at sundown. Because the day begins at sundown. On Friday the 29th, March 2024. And ends on nightfall, Saturday the 30th of March 2024. And this is Shabbat Parah, which is the sabbath of the red heifer hmm 
will they be sacrificing? What is, you know, it feels like, you know, this is monumental. Feels like this is a big sign. This is a, a, a big as sign as the Georgia Guidestones blowing up, maybe bigger. Uh, I do think, again, there's a, a lot of evidence that points to the fact that we're very close to uh, major events happening and breaking out, perhaps even in March, maybe not even waiting uh, till April. The Jewish calendar year, the Jewish year starts on Rosh Hashanah. That's the head of the year. The day when Adam and Eve were created, they say. The number of any given year at the time of the writing of this article. Now, this article was written in 2007, so it was 57, 67. Now it's 57, 84, 17 years later. So they, they say it's the amount of years which have elapsed since creation, which gives the creation date, depending on which calendar, Gregorian, uh, you know, 3760 or 3761, because, again, we've had changes in our calendar. So yeah, it's interesting, but obviously not the case. This was not the creation. What were they talking about? I think that's really when the system took over, it fully took over. That does kind of feel right or started to take over. Um, because we have, for instance, this Egyptian text, the Book of the Heavenly Cow. A part of this book dates back much farther, 2181 to 2040 BC. So before Adam and Eve. So, you know, it must have been other humans or other humanoid beings that were writing that book if they're saying... Uh, the creation of Adam and Eve was, you know, 5,700 years ago. Yeah. I mean, yeah, some people believe that literally. But then again, some people believe there are bridges for sale in Brooklyn. Uh, that's really dating me. And then, of course, when we get back to the uh, Enuma Elish, the Atrahasis, the Sumerian records, which are, again, 1,500 to 2,000 years before anything v biblical at all, period. And they talk about, uh, the, again, the Adama or the Adamu being created. And what is that really? Well, it's, it's, it's a, a specific type of human. And, and what we're talking about really is, is when they started to genetically engineer a more manageable human. This is really what we are talking about. A more manageable version. This is perhaps dating back to uh, the second chromosome fusion. You know, the second chromosome in humans is fused, and and we have been altered. This is perhaps where they're altering the DNA so that ninety something percent quote unquote junk DNA. Well, maybe this was when uh, that last edit happened. <laughs> There's an edit going on right now, and and that's pretty obvious. As we think about M, I'm going to do a period, 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 R, period, 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 N, period, 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 A. So maybe this was the last major revision there. Hmm, interesting. You know, the nine oldest copies of the Torah, or the five books of Moses, they don't date that far back. Look at this. This is number nine. And, and this is pretty much... Um, you know, again, what you have written between 1155 and 1225 CE, and you got you have Sumerian texts that go, you know, 2000 years BC and Egyptian even slightly farther. Wow, the oldest complete Torah only dates between the 11th or 12th centuries. Talk about your revisionist history. And coincidentally, um, in the Hindu tradition, the Kali Yuga starts when Krishna's departure from earth happens, which is taken by some to be about 3102 BC. So the Dark Age starts around 600 years after uh, the beginning of Adam and Eve, according to the Hebrew calendar. Isn't that curious? Isn't that curious? That is curious. And meanwhile, religious group smuggles herd of red cows from Texas to West Bank to fulfill prophecy. This is what they're all about. They want to fulfill what has already been laid out. 
And, you know, again, revisionist history. We talked about the Masoretes. That's their job, is to constantly revise and edit to make things fit. And, you know, we see like the 700 Club. How many of your grandma and grandpas have donated money to, to this? You know, this is the system. Again, 33% of people identify as Christian, 30% identify as uh, being of the Muslim faith. Right there, that's 63%. Now, less than 1%, it's less than half of 1% identify as Jewish. Um, but those are the three Abrahamic traditions there. So here, you know, they're just, they're just waiting. Why? Because it's the return of the Messiah. It's the return of the Messiah. Well, we have to have a red hef heifer to be sacrificed, you know, and, and we could debate all day, you know, did Jesus die on a Friday or Wednesday? But how about the fact that, you know, the biblical Jesus is a creation of the system. It's not the real uh, person. And think about this. This is why certain, you know, certain things just turn my stomach so bad. Uh, the Joshua Manifesto and, and you have, this is big, big business. And uh, understanding, un you got to understand Charisma News. Yeah. And, and this is what I was exposed to in my early uh, 20s, late teens uh, through friends that actually woke me up to the fact that they were, <laughs> they were totally under the satanic system. And it never felt right to me. It never felt right to me. This is big business. We, we've talked about how rich some of these preachers are. And, and again, those books make their way into the top uh, echelons. They, they're promoted. The Temple Institute raising money. Who is this Temple Institute? Well, this is the Temple Institute here. You can support their work because they want to bring about Armageddon. This, this is how they get there. Well, who is the Temple Institute? Uh, it's a group. And who's in this group? Uh, well, it was founded by R Rabbi Yisrael Ariel. And its current director general is David Schwartz. New York billionaire Henry Swayeka has supported the Institute as well as the Israeli government. What's the Israeli government doing right now? What's the Israeli government doing right now? You know, feeling into his energy, um, you know, I'll, let, I'll just share that it, it's not pleasant. It's not pleasant. And looking into uh, Henry Swayeka, he's rich. He's a billionaire. He's a billionaire. Bought shares in uh, Warner Communications, made a ton there, went to Columbia Business School, got a job at Merrill Lynch, uh, actually ended up um, making a lot of money uh, <laughs> by selling to J.P. Morgan Chase. Ah, yeah, Highbridge, CIO, guided the firm through multiple market cycles, it made tons of money, billionaire, 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 billionaire. Who's Highbridge, you know, his company's client list? Again, going back to J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, Duke University Endowments. Oh, my gosh, yeah. California Institute of Technology, University of Chicago. It, it goes on and on. You know, th this is Fortune 500. This is, uh, this is a system as you get. The system wants to create these conditions. The system is creating this. And it's all pointing towards the future redemption and the coming of the Messiah. But what really is the coming of the Messiah? That's the big question. Because ultimately, who is the Messiah? Well, the Jewish concept of a Messiah is very different, you know, from even what the Bible pictures uh, Yeshua Jesus as. But then there's two comings, and the first coming was more of the Lamb, and the second coming is more of the Lion. Oh, yeah. You know, controlling the world. They're, they're looking, uh, again, for control. And, and again, Islam literally means to submit. Here's uh, the Pentagon's greatest secret revealed by insider information. The Anunnaki are returning to Earth. 
Oh yeah. Well, this this is the second coming. This is the second coming. It's it's the open out in the open second coming of the Anunnaki because again, go back to those Sumerian uh, scrolls and who created the Adam. It was the Anunnaki with genetic modification dumbing down what was already here. They 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 because the reality is Earth had many species from all over the galaxy that had come to Earth to be part of a restoration plan and to repopulate Earth after Earth, you know, previously known as Tiamat was destroyed in the big war. Tiamat was destroyed. Earth was created from the largest remnants of Tiamat. And then it was taken over by the system that destroyed Tiamat. And that's the system that's ruling now. And that's who's coming back is the Anunnaki. Uh, the Ijiji are here and have been here. And the Ijiji are uh, the chosen people per se of uh, the control system. Again, the Anunnaki are nothing but draconian pawns. They, they are conquered people that have succumbed to the uh, everything that they want us to succumb to. You know, the chipping, the marking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah, absolutely. You know, this is all about the return of the Anunnaki. And it's interesting that Cindy's getting that there's going to be an 11-year period um, because we, we've also gotten that 2035 is when the Anunnaki are in the smart cities literally controlling them themselves out in the open and it's no longer um, any sort of big mystery because they've come back and they've claimed what's theirs and how do people become part of their property by by following their belief systems and and by you know calling on them which so many people are calling on them literally by the names they've given humanity and they don't realize that they're actually calling on uh, the controllers of this very system that they want to escape you know i i think it's just so sad that they prey on the innocence of others the innocence of a human naturally wanting to be part of something that's bigger than themselves that's just within each and every one of us and it's also natural to want to to help and if someone sees someone else being harmed it's natural to want to step in the way of that and keep someone from being harmed so all of these energies that we carry within us that are of the light so many are still being manipulated and ever since uh I would say, well, gosh, it, it's probably been a month or so. I've been feeling a purge coming up right after the this upcoming eclipse on April 8th. And there is going to be a purge and a change in consciousness. And with that change in consciousness, there has to be a change in leadership. So I do see a lot of the controllers no longer here. There seems to be um, some very mysterious things going on and I I feel that we're going to have 11 years of this and it might be a bit of a, a bumpy road it might be a bit of a bumpy road because this is what they want to do they want to bring all of this into manifestation because the longer they can have us in turmoil and the more they can keep us suppressed and the more they can keep us in fear to uh, go along to get along the more they can be, they have control and that's that's what they need, that's what they want and they're not even from this planet, they just have this urge to control. It's like natural, you know, like a scorpion. I mean, it has an urge to sting. It, it just is and we're kind of dealing with people with these natural urges that are so different than what many, many who have been awakened uh, are a little bit different than that we truly want to help so I, I just want to recognize that too there's a lot of people out there who believe wholeheartedly in, in the bible that it's really the word of god they're great people they're wonderful people i just don't like to see how their belief system is lassoed and um, dragged around mm, absolutely Many faiths have definitive teachings about the afterlife, but in answer to the question, what happens after we die? The Torah, the five books of Moses, the most important religious text for Jews, is silent. Nowhere does it discuss the afterlife in detail. 
Interesting, is it not? Over the centuries, a few possible descriptions of the afterlife have been incorporated into Jewish thought. However, there's no definitively Jewish explanation for what happens after we die. The Torah is silent on the afterlife. No one knows exactly why the Torah doesn't discuss the afterlife. Instead, it focuses on <laughs> Olam HaZeh, which means this world. The here and the now, this world, because it is all, all about the conquest of this world by the control system. It's not about afterlife, not at all. It never has been. Just like when you, know, you, you look at the Bible creation story, it's not about the creation of this world. It's really all about the system, and it's all about the recreation that first part there in first Genesis is about the recreation of the earth from the remnants of Tiamat. And then after that, it's about the control system taking, taking control and demanding blood sacrifice. And so many, you know, Christians believe that, you know, Jesus came and died for your sins as a blood sacrifice instead of a red heifer because God demanded it. No, that's the control system. That's not the creator of this universe. The creator of this universe is, is not Yahweh and does not demand blood sacrifice. And why would a religion, isn't religion all about trusting in what happens after we die and, and learning about what happens after we die? And isn't it about life after life? No, it's about here and now. Yeah, if you really want to learn about afterlife, you have to go into other um, other books again. And also, most importantly, go into yourself and go, go into invest in yourself, invest in meditation, invest in, in qigong, energy work uh, of sorts, yoga. You know, go inside. Everything you need is inside. And this is the big reveal. It's never been about the afterlife. It's all about controlling this world and controlling humanity as a resource. Mm -hmm. I really love you bringing up that point about investing in yourself because these mainstream religions, they kind of force people to invest in them, you know, invest in their rituals, invest in their prayers, you know, do this because I said so. When in reality, people need to be feeding their own soul. They need to be planting their own garden. They need to be growing flowers for themselves instead of going outside and taking on someone else's energies. Um, it's This is all about our our journey. It's all about our journey. And we need to give to ourselves. The love of source is none of any of the stuff that you have seen here today. Absolutely none of it. This is all man-made. This is made up. This is made up by people who really need to have the control. I cannot stress that enough. The love of source is an... <laughs> it's... You, it's really hard to feel it on this world where there's filters put in place with our human body. So unless you are actually outside the human body, you've had a near death experience. It's very difficult to feel the love of source. And I promise you the love of source is none of this. No, absolutely. So I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, it's, it's part of the reveal and it makes a lot of people uncomfortable and, yeah, there, there is a creator, there is a source of all things, and, and that truly is a benevolent being, and it is intended to be a benevolent system that's been hijacked by uh, these controllers and gets humanity, the bulk of humanity, to believe in the controllers as the ultimate authority. And so, you know, that is the big reveal. And we want to thank you guys for being part of this family. Much love and gratitude. Stay safe out there. Source bless and namaste. Namaste.